Understanding Industrial Action, a guide for English language learners. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to explore the meaning and usage of the phrase, industrial action. This is a term often heard in news and discussions related to workplaces and labor relations. Understanding this phrase is not just about adding a new term to your vocabulary, but also about gaining insight into an important aspect of working culture and employee rights. So, let's dive in and unravel the layers of this interesting phrase. Firstly, let's define industrial action. In simple terms, it refers to various measures taken by employees, often represented by a union, to put pressure on their employer. This can include strikes, where workers refuse to work, or work to rule, where employees do only their minimum contractual work. The key point here is that industrial action is used as a form of protest or negotiation tool by workers to achieve certain goals, like better pay or working conditions. Now, let's look at the different types of industrial action. The most common form is a strike, where employees stop working altogether. However, there are other forms too, such as work to rule. Employees do only what is outlined in their job description, no more. Go slow. Workers intentionally reduce their pace of work. Overtime ban. Employees refuse to work more than their regular hours. Each of these actions has its own impact and is chosen based on the specific situation and objectives of the workers. Understanding the reasons behind industrial action is crucial. Typically, these actions arise from disputes over issues like wages, working conditions, job security, and company policies. Workers resort to industrial action as a last resort, often after negotiations with the employer have failed. It's a way for employees to show their collective strength and push for changes they believe are necessary. Industrial action is not just a matter of employee-employer relations, it has legal and social implications too. Different countries have various laws governing the legality and process of industrial action. Furthermore, these actions can have a significant impact on the economy, public services, and even the social fabric, depending on the industry and scale of the action. To give you a clearer picture, let's look at some recent examples of industrial action from around the world. These examples will help you understand how industrial action plays out in real scenarios and its effects on society and the economy. I hope this video has helped clarify what industrial action means and why it's a significant term in the context of labor relations and employee rights. Remember. Understanding such terms not only enhances your language skills but also your awareness of global workplace dynamics. Thank you for watching, and keep learning!